So with your giraffe ears on, you hear the feelings behind the words. You hear the need. Every moment we have feelings and needs. So we're hearing the truth. What's really alive in this person now? It's better for you to hear only that because then you don't live in a world of criticism or judgments. You take away all power from other people to dehumanize you when you have giraffe ears on. You never have to worry about other people's reaction to what you say. You can be honest without fear because you know I don't ever have to worry about how others respond. Only what ears I have on to respond to their response. But I can control that. I can't control how others respond. And if I'm going to worry about something I can't control, I'll become a nice, dead person. You see, I'll be afraid to reveal myself for fear. What if they say this? Well, who cares what they say? If you have giraffe ears on, it's a gift. All they're saying is, please, please. So let's hear the please behind the message that you hear. First read off the message, and then let's hear how you heard the feelings and needs behind it. What I expect my daughter would say was, um, I can't control myself when I'm so angry. I can't control myself when I'm so angry. And uh, when I thought about it, um, I would think I could say, are you feeling frustrated because you are needing some other ways to express your anger? That's what I ask you to do, to try to hear the feelings and needs. And even if that's not accurate, notice what it does, even if it's wrong. It demonstrates a value. It demonstrates that you value what's alive in that person. That you're taking the time to try to connect with what's alive in that person. When people trust that that's what's interesting to you, already we can solve anything, you see. What makes it hard to resolve things is when people feel the other person is only interested in winning. They don't care about me. They're just out to show me that I shouldn't do this. But by just stopping and trying to connect, you've demonstrated a powerful value, that you value what's alive in her. OK? Another sure. one. Yes? Uh, with my, related to my son, are you feeling distressed, confused, because you are needing help? That's the idea. Again, even if it's not accurate. It gives the, it, notice, even if it's not accurate, it brings the other person's attention to their needs. It gives them a chance to correct it. <coughs> Better to be guessing wrong what a person need is than to hearing what they think. You'll be living in a different world when you are trying to connect with their needs than the world you'll be living in if you hear what they think. I need some help in addressing the um, feelings and needs behind the um, answer that I got back, which was one of the things that you said um, before lunch, which can be the most dangerous when somebody just said, you make a request and somebody says, yes, I'll do that. Yeah. Can you help me? I mean, I, I could guess. I mean, my, what I wrote down was, are you feeling um, pain because you're needing recognition for the job you're doing. Okay, I like that. But, oh, okay. But go ahead with the book. I mean, it, it feels like there's a huge leap from the response, yes, I'll do that, to me asking that question. Yeah, it's you're trying to sense what's really behind it. That's one of the two giraffe ways. The other possibility that would also be giraffe is to say bullshit in giraffe. How do you say bullshit in giraffe? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling uneasy with your okay. okay. Uh, I wish I could trust it, but I don't. I'd really like you to take a moment and really tell me whether it would meet your needs to do as I requested. <coughs> so that's when I would guess that the okay isn't okay. So uh, okay. that's how I would say bullshit in giraffe. Okay. Thank you. Giraffes are not nice. See, much of, I think, the violence in the world is created by nice people, so don't mistake the word nonviolence as being nice. Are you feeling abandoned? Not a feeling. It's a thought. Don't encourage jackals to think that way. 
Are you feeling afraid? Now we're cooking. Because you are needing reassurance? Now we're cooking. That I will not disappear. That your needs will be taken care of. Leave yourself out of the other person's needs. They can live without you. All of their needs can be met without you. How could I satisfy your needs? How could I satisfy your needs? That's a jackal question. If the, that kind of question, if the other person is smart, they'll take the Fifth Amendment. Yeah. This was an answer to um, when my daughter said, you sound like you're reading from a book. You sound like you're reading from a book. And I say, are you feeling scared, separate, or alienated? And are you needing to be responded to in a genuine, heartfelt way? Yes, but you're doing it again when you do that. <laughs> so with such a jackal for a while, until you make clear to them why you're doing it, so they will have less distrust of it, you would do just as you said, but silently. Silently? Yes. So you don't think we have to do this out loud for it to be powerful. It can be powerful if we don't say a word, as long as where our attention is, is here. You see. Even it, so you might have heard just that, but maybe not have said it out loud. See, yeah, see that's all you can hear with the giraffe ears on. And you can hear that even if you're silent. You don't have to say out loud. You could just have heard that. But you'll show that your attention is here from your eyes. Because when we're hearing what is in a person's heart, our eyes are different than when we're hearing a criticism. Or when we're making a criticism. You see? Our eyes, it's not, it's not subtle. Now the advantage in being able to say it out loud is the person can correct us if we're not accurate. But even if we are, don't say it out loud, we live in a different world when we're connecting here than when we're hearing criticism. Um, this is a, um, the, the question would be, um, that I would have asked would be something like, I would like you to ask me for help if you need it. Yes. And then the, the person responds? I am afraid of becoming a burden. No, there's a pretty, it's almost a giraffe response. So how do you respond to this person? I'm afraid of becoming a burden. Now, if you're a jackal, you would say, no, you wouldn't be a burden. So if you're a jackal, you will try to reassure. See, jackals try to fix people in pain. They try to give reassurance. They try to make it better. They can't stand pain. They immediately make matters worse by trying to get rid of the pain. In the book, When Bad Things Happen to Good People, written by Rabbi Harold Kushner, he's talking about a very tragic time in his life when his oldest son is dying. And he said, what could be worse than watching my son die? What could be worse were the things that good people were telling me to make me feel better? that made me feel worse. And what could be even hor more horrible than that? What they were doing, what they were saying that made me feel worse were exactly the things I had been saying to other people for 20 years in my role as a rabbi. See, he had been responding by trying to make it better. See. So we don't want to do that now. This is an important message. Well, I'm afraid that I'll be a burden. Put on giraffe ears. What is this person feeling and needing when they say that? Um. Are, you, are you feeling... Afraid? They've already told you the feeling. That's easy. So, the afraid, the afraid, are you, so you're feeling afraid because why? Why are they afraid? That you don't trust my offer to help. Now put that in a need. You need some reassurance? That you I'll need... really be there? No. I need reassurance that if you're there, 
you're doing it for you and not for me. Uh-huh. See, they want to be sure that if you're giving, you're giving out of self-fullness, not selflessness. Now, what about if you're not 100%? Don't do it. <laughs> I would suggest you heed Joseph Campbell's advice when he, uh, having studied all the basic myths of the world and the basic religions, concludes that if there's one wise thing that seems present in all the basic religions, it's this. Don't do anything that isn't play. Yes, don't do anything that isn't play. And it'll be play if you're meeting your own needs. So don't do things for other people. Well, the only right way is hold your it, way. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Your ears just dropped off. Put your, ear, <laughs> put your ears back on, because if your ears are on, you will never hear the word right. It doesn't exist. If you hear that word, it's going to be toxic. Never hear another person telling you what's right. It's not good for them, it's not good for you. Okay, so just hear feelings and needs. I Are tell you, you 30 times you don't listen. My God, what's, can't yourself. you see this bed? <laughs> there's, there's, pardon? No, you don't. You're proving now you don't. Isn't it funny if how If you were I listening, would... you wouldn't say, I listen. Isn't it funny how he always comes in? Pardon? It's funny how he always comes in. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's this person feeling and needing? Let me, let me, let me help you out. Want me to help you out with yeah. this, Jack? Yeah. Let me put on some giraffe ears here. So, Jackal, is it that uh, it's frustrating when you have a certain sense of order and you'd really like uh, to have that order maintained in the house? Well, that's a part of it, but it's, it's not, it's, that's not the only thing. It's, I've told him over and over again. Oh, so is it that you feel hurt because you have a need to feel like your needs matter? Yes. It's like this it doesn't matter to him. He doesn't care. Ah. So what's really the pain for you in this is your need to feel like you matter, that your, your needs matter. Yes. <laughs> so how do you feel when you hear the jackal say this? I'm feeling... Um like I don't, well, that's not a feeling. Um, I'm glad you're catching it. Right. Feeling confused. Yeah. Feeling confused. Um, primarily because I can't identify the needs that uh, are being expressed. So you would really like to be able to hear a need like that when it's really going on. Yeah, I would like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't act like you do. Hold it, Jack. <laughs> That isn't going to make it easier for him, Jack. <laughs> that isn't going to make it easier. So you're really, it's really painful for you. It's hard to believe that he cares enough to really matter. Yes, you know, because I've told him over and over, so. So it's really for you an issue of whether your needs matter. Yes. I'm feeling that it's not so much the beds or the dishes, though feeling of something else. I'm just telling you what it is. It's, it's the general fear I have that my needs don't matter to you. How do you feel when the jackal tells you that? Still confused. What makes you confused about this? Because I don't know how to respond to those needs. What, what it would take is just empathy. If she could just feel the empathy that I just gave her. If you could just say, are you feeling in pain because you have the need for reassurance that your needs matter? Yes. Yes. I've tried to tell you that for years. You don't listen. Yes. Now it comes in. I guess now I'm feeling sad because I'm not meeting uh, um, the needs. 
Hold your sadness. She needs more empathy. See, this is what often happens. We get to our feelings too quickly. With my help, we just got started. We just, this is not the end. There's a lot more pain in there that she needs empathy for before she can hear your sadness. So, Jackal, am I hearing you that for you the real painful issue here is not being confident that your needs matter? My needs have never mattered in any relationship, not in my family and not now. So what's real painful is for you to feel that your needs matter, and this has been going on a long time. Yes. Yes, I do everything I can. I've told him over and over again. So you do everything you know how, and when your needs still don't get responded to, it really hurts. 